folks how's everyone doing i hope everyone's well i was about to dig through this mainly to make sure everything was here and to get our crank shaft out the way i assemble my cases i freeze the crank and heat the cases and put them together or you know if the bearings are out of the cases i do it a little different but uh i use the heat and shrink method it, you know there's no right or wrong way to do it but you know that's just the way i do it but with that said, this is one of the two kit saws we picked up to sell. Um, they will be assembled here by me. They will be locked tight, used where it needs be. But to be honest with you, last I'm thinking the last couple of these that I got already had thread locker on the bolts. But you know, who knows? I could have just got lucky and got <laughs> some weird random kit. But uh, Quality control on these has came up quite a bit. Most of you know that Farmer Tech has their own Hulls Forma and their John Cutter line of saws. Um, so, you know, if you're selling saws and putting a warranty on them, you you, you got to kind of step up your QC a little bit. But with that said, you know, these will be ported. Um, Squish we dialed in. We'll get port time on as close as we can get it without being able to do heavy machine work. I'll you know, have a pop up piston with cable rings. Um, we'll probably use about everything out of the kit. Um, you know, it'll be a pretty badass saw when we're done. I've got one here that I've built on the channel set up about the same way. No crazy port work done, it's just simple old school work. Um, you're welcome to find any of the videos on it. There's even video showing it in the mill and it didn't even have a pop up in it at that time. And you know, the squish and port work was left kind of moderate on it, but because we were milling with the saw, but um, these will be pretty badass saws. Um, would you be able to use it in production, logging or tree work? You know, I don't know, have no idea how long it would last. Some people have used them without issues, but you know, others seem to not have very good luck out of them at all, but, you know, it just is what it is, but, you know, if you want a badass firewood saw or just something to play around with, um, you know, the price I'm going to ask for these and list them for is not going to be as much as, you know, you would think. Um, I'm thinking like 550 your best offer, you know, plus shipping, but, um, that's what we're going to list on that and see what happens there. I feel that's a really good price. Um, my time and knowledge here and the wear and tear on my tools has to be worth something. But, you know, we'll just have to see. Uh, I'm damn sure not going to go in the hole on them. I'll let them sit here um, on a shelf before I do that. But enough around on my jaw. This will be the first one we build. Um... These have a really nice clutch cover. I don't think anyone that grabbed a hold of that would uh, have anything to say about it at all. Even the dogs that come on these are, you know, they're pretty dang sturdy. They're not like the usual $10, $15 set of dogs you'll pick up off eBay. We put a set of those on a saw here and they got bent before they got home, but... Ever since that, if I can, I try to remove dogs and side covers with dogs on them. Um, <laughs> just to keep from that happening. But, you know, it is what it is. These carrier services, they just don't really care about your stuff at all. And that's part of your air filter box. Most people know that. I've done enough of these stupid things. I know about where every bolt and little, every little thing goes, you know. Make sure I got you folks some frame. <laughs> kind of self-explanatory there. Inner dog, bucking spike, felling spike, whatever you want to call it. There's your chain brake cover and all your hardware. Um, a lot of it we're not going to get into because some of these bags will have like other numerous uh, assortments of uh, bolts and nuts and screws and like this bag just a bunch of randomness but we've got our chain not our chain but our uh, bar plate um there's a spark plug i do use these to get them running <laughs> but once i get them broke in or not broke in but once i get all that residual oil out of the crankcase and put a little time on them 
if I can remember, I usually pull them out and put a new auto light plug in. I'm kind of a fan of auto light plugs. I've used them for years, but yeah, just a big bag of random stuff. And there'll be several of those in the box. Like I said, we're mainly digging for the crank. And our flywheel, nine times out of ten, your uh, flywheel key, woodruff key, half moon key, whatever you want to call it, is in there with it in a little baggie. Sometimes even the flywheel nut will be in there. I've seen that a couple times. And these are like a big model car. You know, if you were to print off an IPL, you know, you, you could put one together with just watching a couple of my videos or other guys' videos. Once you get the crankcases assembled, it's kind of all downhill from there. Um, they're a really fun project, but I've got to where I can throw them together like in an evening. So, you know, it's not as fun to me anymore, I guess. I'd rather, you know, do the port work on one. But our plastic, Farmer Tech plastic, guys, it has improved a lot over the years. Some of the first stuff I got, you had to like really, really highly modify it to make it fit your saw. I'll be lucky if I don't lose something. And nine times out of ten, this box is going to be your carburetor. Farmer Tech carburetors are a hit or miss, just like any other aftermarket carb. Um, I've got one right now on one of my it's a 2171 372 hybrid to multicolored saw. Carburetor crapped out yesterday, and I ended up lemming with a Mac 1010 and a Pro Mac 1010 for several hours my hands have just quit vibrating <laughs> those saws are fun and have their place but i would not want to take one to do any kind of long-term work with it and i know a lot of people love them but um i'm gonna try to come up with a solution to maybe insulate the handlebars top cover plastic Probably long boring. I wouldn't blame anyone at all if they just said hell with this and uh, hit the back button. But if you watch it, I really appreciate it. And that is your AV mounts. Sometimes they'll be really, really hard. And these actually feel pretty good. Um, I really hope the intake boot fits good. Sometimes those are a hit or miss, but if it don't, I'm pretty sure I have a couple of OEM ones laying over there. They're a little old, but, you know, if we have to use them, we will. But most of the time on the steel stuff, the OEM, these uh, Farmer Tech boots will fit. I think the only saw I really had problems with here recently was uh, my 380 kit saw. Not sure what I, I ended up ordering a boot from Duke or someone and putting on it and didn't have a problem. There's our clutch. That stuff's usually pretty good. You know, a lot of my saws have farmer tech clutches and drums on them. I don't, it's just, that's just one of those things I don't really care at all to buy aftermarket. You know, it's clutch drum. Who cares? What do we have here? There's two big boxes. I bet this is a cylinder. Be cool if we screwed up and sent a big bore, but then again, it wouldn't because our uh, pop up wouldn't work. Our cylinder, we'll get into that and look at it in a little bit. Um, it looks like it is one of their better pieces. You can tell that by the outer plating that's on them. If you get one and the outer plating's kind of dull or lack thereof, outer plating. Um, <laughs> It's usually not going to be a very good cylinder, and anyone that builds these knows what I mean. Ours are cool. I've really not had a trouble, not any trouble, knock on wood. Um, I usually dial in, you know, the timing on them's good. There seems to be, like I said, I've not had a problem yet, but, you know, this one may slap me in the face when I'm wanting to sell it. What else? What else? Our uh, tank assembly. Um... I like these because they use the uh, old school twist end caps, like an 066. Um, pretty nice piece. My 066 actually has a tank assembly from the Duke on it. I had the original one that came on it, but it was busted up and couldn't really get the uh, 
trigger and the interlock and the switch and all of that to work. And let's hope we have a dual port. And there we do. Um, they kind of just fish gilled it and punched it out right from the get go. I probably won't be doing no pipes or anything in these because my welds just look horrible. I know, you know, as long as it works, it's all right, but something I'm trying to sell, I'd like it to kind of look immaculate, you know, when the person gets it. And we will put time on these saws before I, you know, put them up for sale. They will be took and, you know, we'll cut some wood with them. And again, like I told you, there's multiple bags of randomness. Um, this looks like it's mainly bolts in this one. And there's what we're looking for is our crankshaft. Let's see what it looks like. Make sure there's nothing else in there with it. These cranks, they've really stepped up the game on them in the last few years, too. Some of the first ones I got that was Farmer Tech, I was like, I don't know if I even want to use that or not. Um... I put together an old school 038. It was a metal tanked one. I bought it off eBay. Thing looked like it was drug out of a lake. Um, but the cases were good and the metal tank and everything was good. So, you know, that was one of my first farmer tech orders, I think. We uh, put a big bore to set the uh, 52 millimeter top end on it. Um, had to hog out the cases for the piston to clear, but it made a pretty good saw, ended up selling it. That was about the same time that I had to redo the engine in the Mustang because uh, the guys I bought it off of had done some stuff wrong and it made one trip down the road and lost oil pressure and, you know, now I can say I build it myself, but that's a pretty good looking crank. I'm going to pause you guys and stick it in the freezer. Get us the water out while we was in there. Those great value waters from Walmart are hard to beat out. They just taste amazing. I like Sam's Club ones too. I go through a lot of water. <laughs> All right, what next, guys? Um... I said big box of randomness. We can probably just set that back down in here. And nine times out of ten in this big box is your crankcase assembly. There was something laying in the bottom of the box. Not sure what. But these handlebars, again, some of the first ones that were made were just so flimsy and felt so bad. Um, and the padding that was on them was hard as rocks. And you know, that goes that way with anything aftermarket. But these have improved a lot. A lot of it's improved really, like I said, since they started letting their own line of saw out. And you know, I'm assuming they had talked to some of the guys that were actually buying the parts kits. They were never intended to be put together. Um, one guy that sells on eBay even says that they don't warranty any of it if you actually put a saw together, which I think is crazy. Well, check it out. When did they start doing that, guys? I know some of you guys build as many of these as me. The crank seals are in the box. That's so freaking weird. Normally the seals are left in the, uh, they're already in the cases, if that makes any sense. I kind of wonder if the bearings are even in them. But that is really cool. And your crankcase gasket's always down in there too, so just be aware, you do not want to mess that up. Yeah, uh, that's first on me. Every one of these things I've put together, I'll have to go back and I think that the, uh, the 880, I don't think the seals were installed in it either, if I remember right, but sure enough, they've started leaving the seals out of these for you to put in yourself. Um, 
that's good we have 660 crank seal tools here um you can just use a socket and be really careful and pick them in too but that's about it in a nutshell i guess um we'll get this cylinder out and check it out and inspect it real good and see what's up with it and then we'll try to see if we can figure out how they had everything back in this box but i ain't for sure when i'll get started with this i've got uh well, i was thinking kind of tonight maybe it'd be cool to get the crankcases together to be honest with you and there's your head gasket which i highly highly doubt we'll use and uh your muffler gasket and then that full that goes on top of the saw i can never get that stuff to stick no matter how well i clean that um, <laughs> is what it is I guess rings which we will not be using wrist pin we will not be using piston we will not be using it's not a bad looking piece um, let's see I'm having a look at it all myself before I put it on camera exhaust port's pretty even looks like it's sitting in the cylinder halfway straight a lot of rough casting that's gonna have to be cleaned up a lot and i'm sorry guys but i'm just not leaving that stuff in there um there may be some misconception on what you know what one guy calls rough and you know the other guy calls rough but at the end of the day i think a lot of us end up with about the same texture on the port and it's when someone <laughs> You know, you just you can't never tell what someone's talking about over the internet or through a video. Um, but if I can take my finger and rough a cr rub across and feel big humps and lumps, I call that rough or, you know, like little dimples and indentions. But this one ain't real bad. It'll clean up, I guess. But, um, cylinder's not bad at all lining in it doesn't look bad or the plate and whatever you want to call it you can see the base here it does look like the plating's pretty thick you know it's your typical farmer tech cylinder doesn't really look bad at all looks like there's a lot of room for improvement in it though but that's it you know that's your kit in a nutshell um they're they are what they are guys do you ever just get your words mixed up and just forget what in the hell you were even doing or saying <laughs> i seem to do that a lot as i get older but you know again on that um some guys will say i'm gonna rough things up well well i think you know it's possible to misunderstand people um i get that but at the end of the day i think we're all just going for some sort of texture in that intake port and in the transfers and you know most of us know that you should have a pretty slick exhaust port you have to go as far as i do and mirror polish it no you probably don't but it really doesn't take that much longer like five ten minutes if you've got the right material and you know you'll go from a slick port to a really 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 slick port and then you know you don't have to worry about carbon piling up and wrecking your saw but anyway i thought i'd unbox this on video just to you know get a video up for you guys um i understand a lot of you are stuck in due to weather and not able to get out and log and stuff but We'll uh, try to get some videos up. Um, 
But as always, you know, if you hung around and watched this boring mess, I really, really appreciate it. I don't know that we're going to hit a thousand subs by the new year. It's kind of slowed back down now for some reason. So I'm going to try to crank out as many videos as I can. That normally helps. It kind of gets you in the algorithm. And, um, you know, as always, uh, you, you guys stay safe and y'all have a good one.